Lieutenant Tasha Yar got a snoot full. Wesley feels strange, but also good. And data leaks when you prick him. Hello, everybody, and welcome to The Seventh <laughs> Rule with Sirach Lofton and Denise uh... Crosby. <laughs> wow, that's an intro. Yeah. Those Ryan, are direct quotes. It's just a, th those are. Uh, my name is Ryan yeah. T. Huss. Today we're doing a review of Star Trek: The Next Generation, Season One, Episode Two, entitled "The Naked Now," story by John D. F. Black and D. C. Fontana, teleplay by D. C. Fontana, directed by Paul Lynch. This was October fifth, nineteen eighty-seven, or October third, nineteen eighty-seven, depending on where you look. We still haven't figured out that out. How you guys doing? Oh, doing great. Doing great. One of my one of my favorite episodes. So <laughs> me too. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, this was a lot going on in this episode. <laughs> so we specifically, myself and the fans specifically, did not say anything to you, Sirach, about this episode and what a change in tone it is from the first one because we didn't want to spoil anything what what were you thinking when you first saw what was going on or let's just, you know what let's just start with uh denise's rock hard abs by the way <laughs> good work good work that's those, oh, those are real kudos. no cgi no cgi no uh no uh um that that that's of course before children <laughs> Wow. You two ladies, let's be honest. <laughs> this is it's all happens. Children, children, uh, you know, have a way of changing things. But yeah, uh, but you were you were rocking it in this episode. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I found myself um, laughing a lot watching this episode. I, I I would pause and rewind things so many times and. Me too. Uh, I, I just found myself laughing and really uh, having a good time watching this episode. I felt good, um, which I didn't expect because I was expecting, oh, this is going to be something else. Um, but I'll say that, you know, I did feel I had a feel for the original series. So it this did yeah. for me feel like an extension of the original series kind of storytelling and even pace mm -hmm. and so there there was a lot of comparisons for me i really felt like i was watching the original series uh with a different cast in some type of way it, it actually it felt closer to the totally uh, spock star trek well, funny you should say that because this is kind of a continuation of an original series episode when they mentioned James T. Kirk and the Enterprise, by the way, everybody at home, that's a non-appearance mention for James T. Kirk, maybe not the last, but this was season one, episode four, I believe, of the original series called The Naked Time. So this is kind of okay. like a reference to that. And thank goodness they didn't start doing that with like every single Star Trek series, right? Then like <laughs> Deep Space Nine, episode three is The Naked Wahoo's It and Voyager episode five is... The naked guy yeah. or what are the naked gun? I don't know. Uh, yeah, they, the they, 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 um, correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I think the next gen is the only Star Trek, right? That, that takes from the original and, and either reworks one of the episodes or, um, you know, has, has a continuum in some way. I don't think any of the other series did that. It happens a little bit more now with the newest <clears throat> Star Trek series. Like they're doing little like triple. Well, actually, uh, Deep Space Nine did do a triple episode. Triple. That was pretty good. Mm -hmm. But this one, like Sirach says, at least to me, is this first season does feel more like original series Star Trek than it feels like 90s Star Trek. Right. And of course, there's a reason for that, because a lot of the original series right. people were were brought on board. And Gene, um, very much like you know, we touched on last last week, really, really um, wanted that template in place. You know, he Star Trek 
he saw Star Trek in this way. Like it, it'd be so interesting to see what Gene would think now. Yeah. Watching yeah. watching the new shows, or even any any that followed, you know, after his death. What you know, what comments he might have about it. You know, would he like it? Would he agree with the with the direction? You know, because you really see, you really see in that first season of the next gen that it it it, it goes hand in hand with the original series. He had a particular vision that he kind of stuck Absolutely. with. You wonder Absolutely. if then if he continued to make more series you know, Deep Space Nine, Voyager, whatever, and he was show running those, if they those would all have that same kind of tone as original series or first season. Exactly. I have a feeling it would look quite differently. Yeah, he go there's a different pace that I noticed when he's at the, the helm of the show. Mm -hmm. um, like there's moments, for example, when I'm watching it and you can hear the those tricorder sounds or, or something like there's a, there's a quietness and then there's the, there's this sound effect that they use when there's a stillness in the room and it's consistent with the original series kind of quietness and then sound effect of the machinery, like this, mm -hmm. this, the sound effects. So I, I noticed those kinds of pace things where it would be slow in certain parts, you know, like a hallway walking down scene, you know, just walking down. A lot of kind of moments like those are always in the original series and Next Generation now I'm seeing these kind of long shots of walking, just bridge noise, ambient sound. Um, it, and it, it adds an eeriness kind of, kind of space station-y feel to it when, mm -hmm. I, when I feel those kinds of moments. Um, hmm. So this definitely made me feel like, oh, this is the original series this is a reboot of the original series, though. Mm. This 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 gave me the, the the most of that kind of a feeling. You know, some people actually have those sound effects as a, like a bedtime thing. Like I think there's like a YouTube program that says like ten hours straight of the Next Generation bridge sounds, and it's just like that that really quiet hum. If you if you really listen, you'll notice every time they're on the ship, depending on no matter where they are, it's slightly different, possibly, but there's like a hum of the mm -hmm. ship. And then when they go yeah. off planet, it's not. But it, if you'll notice, there's always this low, like, mm, kind of sound with little bleeps and yeah. bloops. Uh, bleeps uh, and bloops. Yep. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's what and, they called it. <laughs> uh, the other thing I really enjoyed about this episode was um, how they were giving the characters backstory. So I, I was able to get into um, Tasha Yar's, like, backstory right she yeah. started to say i was abandoned at five years old and i escaped the rape gangs at 15 you know and like like that's like a real and you mentioned this on our last conversation about what was motivating your character what's your backstory and i feel like they gave a lot of that in this episode where it was like oh there's she's been traumatized by this life experience um there are these kinds of things inside of her. We got a little bit of Jordy LaForge's insight to his, uh, I guess, what he wants out of life or what he, you know, his desires, what his dreams would be, essentially. Mm -hmm. um, so I thought there was a good character kind of, because we don't know these characters. Like, this is episode two, really. Yeah. And I'm just, you know, so they have to back, they have to fill us in on what's going on. And, and so we got a little bit of that in this episode, I felt. Yeah, that's a really interesting point you make. Um, like you can imagine the audience tuning in um, that night for that episode and Tasha reveals that, you know, how did that, you know, land with people? Like, wow, man, she at five was yeah. abandoned and, you know, for 10 years was out there on her own, you know, foraging, surviving, dodging rape gangs, you know, I mean, I'd for, I I knew that, you know, was the case, but I, I, I had forgotten literally the timeline, you know, for that. And that, that is really significant, you know, and, and um, I love that you, you, you bring up Jordy. I thought that Tasha and Jordy scene 
were, was was so poignant and so touching, a really lovely moment between them. Um, even though he's, you know, infected with this this thing and is 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 a little out of it, but she she comes upon him in such a kind and tender, um, just empath empathic way. It was it was really. Um, I remember shooting that scene and thinking, um, I I hope there's more of these types of scenes where you know the 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 story pauses for a moment but you see the the interaction between you know these people and who they how 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 much they care for each other mm -hmm. and it was just yeah. you know how she, he touches her face and she lets she lets him and 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 it was just a very very um very sweet moment yeah, I thought um, Lavar's performance was really, really well done, as well as yours. But there yeah. was a vulnerability, a vulnerability that he left in his face and his eyes when he was like, "This felt like a, such a serious moment." Right? It was it, like even you recognize it in the scene where you're like, "Oh, this is really serious." Like, let me take the time and listen to what he has to say right now. Absolutely. Because he's making a, a very serious point. This is not to make him just brush off and say, hey, we got to go. I need you to, this is like, stop and pause. Let's register this man's pain. Yep. You know, let's address it. Let's give him the mm -hmm. opportunity to get it off of his mind, off of his chest, because he wants to release this information that he's, that's holding him he's holding deep inside him and i right. thought you did a great job of making that distinction of like okay i know i have a purpose i know i have to get you over here to this place but this moment is important to you mm -hmm. and so now i'm going to make it important to me mm -hmm. and i and i'm going to sit here and and be the shoulder that you can you know lean on and and, and get it out i thought that was very important because it shows a level of compassion that you guys have for each other as a crew where it's like, oh, okay, this is why his life matters so much to her mm -hmm. or why it matters to each other. So it adds uh, a heightened sense of um, authenticity to the relationships that you guys have. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, I just wanted to add also with Jordy's performance where it really got me was after that scene as well, when he was talking to a uh, Beverly Crusher he said the line, it's not fair, Doc. I've never seen a rainbow, a sunset, a sunrise. And it, the way he delivered, especially the rainbow part of that, like I I, want, I went back and listened to it like two, three more times because I was like, wow, that's that's really good for a second episode. Because a lot of times it takes you know a moment for actors to really figure out what exactly the writers are doing with these characters. But really good actors obviously are like, I can make this my own immediately and clearly everybody like we mentioned last week everybody did their homework ahead of time and this was evidenced uh when Jordy when LeVar Burton did that line and I was really impressed with it yeah me too me too it was really yeah. nice to to see again you know after all this time and it, it just like you know it's so it, it it's such an interesting thing as an actor to you know, you, you, you've you done it, you've shot it, you've, you've lived it, then you step away and you kind of think about it over the years or something will remind you of something. And then you go back and you, you look at it and, and it's really um, a satisfying moment to like go, yeah, that worked. Mm. That works. You know, it's, it it's, it's a unique experience yeah and it's a kind of television or storytelling like where else do you see these <clears throat> kinds of, uh conversations happening on other shows like wh where is this going to go on how are these situations going to be brought up and told in, in another sitcom or another television show it's not going to really happen in a law show or a, a cop show or you know um a sitcom the, it, it, these kinds of really these kinds of conversations these concepts have to mm. be brought out in a science fiction show so you can have people acting out of character you can have these uh, very unusual circumstances and situations 
that will play right. out. It's, it can only be under this format. Um, but I thought, you know, the line that, that impacted me was when he said to you, you know, help me to see, mm-hmm. you know, I, I see more, but more isn't better. Yeah. You know, and then he said, he goes on to say, I want to see, uh, th- you know, through the shallow, dim, in a shallow, dim, beautiful human way. And I right? thought, wow, that's so crazy. Uh, shallow, it's, dim. You can picture it then. Human way. It, helps, yeah. it helps us to picture how he sees versus how we see. Yeah. yeah. And, and, you know, it, not not the way not not perfection he's not looking you know for for perfection it's 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 what makes us truly human are our flaws mm-hmm. you know and our um our our abilities to um live with with them and and to continue to <clears throat> you know stumble and trip and have to figure it out and not have everything tied up in a beautiful little package, um, it that's what really makes us human, hmm. and that's what he's he's almost he's be, he's begging for that, you know. He doesn't really. It's almost like a he doesn't really feel human, right? Yeah, um, yeah, and it, and then you go on essentially to express your, you know, your story. Um, later on with uh, with data and I thought that was a, just as impactful of a scene for me when you reveal the experiences you went through and then you say something which I thought was you know ahead of its time really ahead of its time because this is this was what 87 80, mm-hmm. 80, 87. Yeah, 87 you tell in this case data the way you want to be treated, right? I want, right. I need joy and love, you know, exactly. and you're very specific about this is how I want you to deal with me in this moment. And I thought that's a, a very progressive mm-hmm. way to express yourself as a woman in those times that were really not caught up to this level of thought and expression. Um, I thought that was delivered excellently. Uh, it was it was aggressive but it was sensual it was assertive and it was also just like saying you know this is what i want and it's it's very rare to see in situations where women express directly what they want right without you know having to worry about all the stigmatism of all this other stuff that's weighed on their words mm. absolutely and 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 data being um, you know, uh, exacting, and he takes it. He does. He doesn't. He doesn't. Uh, you know, um, embellish it in any way. He, He's it's, coachable. It's yeah, it's <laughs> yeah. Factual. It's like she wants love. She wants joy. She wants tenderness. Yes. No. It's, there's no. There's no doubting yeah. it. You know, or questioning it, or you know, putting it through some sort of his own filter. It's just the facts, man. State the facts. You know? Yeah, and yeah. It, and and it, and it it's interesting of all the of all the beings on the on the ship of all the characters on the ship that Tasha would would you know desire data. Hmm. Yeah, it's I, and a very I don't know. Interesting, I don't, yeah. complicated, you know, thing about that too. I mean, we could we could. That's interesting. Yeah. Maybe right? he's a, like dive, maybe he's like a safer. Maybe there's some th- some kind of safety there where she's like, I could tell this guy what I want, and he's going to do that, and theoretically nothing more, nothing different, and not harm her. Right. I mean, if I she's, think that's the, I if think she that's has thing, been yeah. in in situations with men, yeah, abusive, um, all abusive, dangerous, violent men, mm-hmm. then like men are not going to be the, you know, the, the thing she, she goes for the Android. It's yeah, so, right. it, it's so interesting, you know, as we're, we're sitting here talking about it. Really yeah. Because point. there's a, there's a, a feeling of safety with him, right? Mm-hmm. Because he, 
doesn't have the baggage of the human experience. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, he's like, I'm programmed. I, I have now multiple we have, techniques. Yeah, in multiple ways. <laughs> Perfect. As long That's as he's warm. Hear, what know? if he's like cold metal, like a robot? Like he needs to actually no, he's, be he's warm. He's got a setting for right. that. Okay. He's, yes. he's got a microwave setting. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's exactly. he was he was fully prepared. He's like I, mm-hmm. I'm ready for this. This is the moment that I've actually been wait. Particularly... Now I'm ready. <laughs> uh, he said a broad variety of pleasuring i was like this guy is amazing and, she, uh, and then and said, then of course tasha says you jewel uh, i know yeah. what a, wasn't that a great <laughs> I line loved it. yeah you, of all things you jewel mm-hmm. you know the, the per your, the your perfection mm-hmm. Just, uh, um, that, that was so so and I, I, I just, I fully functional. That was another thing, you know. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I started laughing when I heard mm-hmm. that. I said, "This is the best." Uh, there this are is some the best moment. Th- those are some of the moments and lines in this episode that still to this day are the most quotable lines in Star Trek. This is episode two. Fully functional is an inside joke forever with Star Trek fans. Uh, you yeah. jewel is mentioned the moment between uh Picard and Crusher the uh the drunk engineer playing with the uh, the isolinear chips i mean multiple techniques all of these things so much came out of the second episode that stood the test of time uh yeah. so that's why this episode's a jewel and there's and it, that scene has so much humor mm-hmm. in it you know it has just this delight in it from from both of them uh, i mean we we were laughing you know our tails off shooting this scene you can you really can only imagine <laughs> i mean you know first of all the costume i've got on is mm. taped and glued to the ex- nth degree i mean <laughs> one hiccup and it's over okay and i come nobody has seen this you know on set yeah. yeah, I come to the the set in this in this bathrobe, you know, and OK, we're, it's time to shoot. And I have to take off the bathrobe and I've got this, you know, thing on barely and <laughs> data. I mean, the Brent's face is like, <laughs> you know, it just and and from that moment on, I said, "You you cannot look at me. Do not look at me. I will <laughs> yeah. never get through this scene with your with his. He he just had this little twinkle in his eye the entire time. You know. This so is yes. just, after you finished shooting that scene, you actually did the real life version of what Tasha said at the end of the at the end of the episode, which was, "This never happened." <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what a what a classic. Um, well, the, I don't want to. When we get further in, I'll, I'll tell you something about the, the, that particular line. It never happened. But yes, because um, I, I'll spoil a, I'll spoil something that we haven't we haven't um, seen yet. I, so. I, I want to still harp on this outfit. So uh, was, Bob, <laughs> <laughs> was Bob Blackman the uh, no, costume designer was, at the time? No, it Tice? was the original Bill Tice. Tice, yeah. So Bill Tice um, did the original series. So he okay. was one of the people that... Um, oh, uh, that changed. makes sense now. It all makes Tice? sense. Of course. Okay. And okay. the the the, the, um, the outfit he had me in was very um, reminiscent of, of sort of some original of the designs series. from the original series, for sure. And um, there were high slits coming up the side of that yep. of those pants you were wearing. Absolutely. Really high slits. Yeah. Oh God! And I mean, and how low that? I mean, oh the V talking down a, to the. It was a double V. I thought <laughs> you you can't go any lower than that that uh, those pants, and you know just enough of the under you know breast yeah. showing, and it just hmm. and Bill was a trip. You know he. Um, he was such a, a lovely, lovely man. And it, it, at that time in the eighties, there was very much this thing where, um, you would have your colors done. 
I don't know if you guys have ever heard about that. Um, you were either a fall, winter, spring, or summer. And you would get, there were people that were professionals that would, you would come and meet them and they would hold up different sw um, swatches of fabric in different hues and shades. And you would get your colors. Wow, your palette. that's really cool. And so your what own, were you? Do you remember? I, I don't remember. I, I, I think I kind of was a fall like in the fun. in those shades but but bill took me we had to we left the studio and went to pasadena one day to have my colors done and so you know he so he could design within that palette and wow. um it was it was just i mean it was it was such an 80s thing i mean i haven't heard about it in all these years. I don't know that anybody's doing this kind of thing anymore. But you know what would be so cool about that is if you're in there modeling and looking at these colors and they're doting over you and holding up these colors next to you, you're probably sitting there going like, oh shit, I never realized this color looks so good on me or I didn't realize. And you're you're finding yeah. out all these new colors that work it's with you. It's fascinating. It's And what doesn't, you know, what you shouldn't, you know, wear, what you mm -hmm. should avoid. Right. And, you know, his whole thing was that yeah, I want, you know, when you do have other clothes on or other outfits besides your uniform, I want it to be within, you know, your range. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was a real personal kind of. Um, it's a on. complexion, skin tone kind mm -hmm. of thing. All of it? that. Yeah. Hair color, eye color, complexions, tones. Um, and it, and it, it was interesting because, you know, you could, you could begin to see it. You'd hold up something, you know, maybe like beige with me right. and I would wash out, right? you know, and then you hold up a blue like this outfit and it suddenly pops. Mm -hmm. I, I'll tell you I what. did a, a guest star on a show called Invasion one time and the wardrobe put me in this brown shirt. And when I watched the episode, I couldn't, you know, I look so terrible in this episode. And I remember saying to myself, I'll never agree to wear mm -hmm. that color again on screen nice. because it just looks so, looks so bad. On yeah, me. you're an obvious spring. Like everybody knows you're a spring. <laughs> yeah, I don't right. know what these spring. guys are thinking. <laughs> Bunch of jerks. Um, but look, we got to jump on our break real quick. Uh, and we'll come right back in just a second. I want to point out that we've already in the second episode, hit the best moment in the history of Star Trek, forgot it existed. I saw it just today and I was <laughs> beside myself. Uh, but we'll talk about that on the other side. We'll be right back on The Seventh Rule. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to The Seventh Rule with Denise Crosby and Sirach Lofton. Hello, hello. Uh, you know what we're doing. It's the Naked Now. Here come the trivioids of the week. There were so <laughs> many. I had to slow myself down. This was too many. Uh, the Enterprise is researching a series of strange messages. Lieutenant Geordi LaForge accuses Dr. Crusher of throwing her voice. Dr. Crusher believes Data was boasting. Wesley shows off his science project. Geordi feels like he's burning up inside. Geordi has wild things coming into his mind. And Geordi wants to see in shallow, dim, beautiful human ways. Riker is obsessed with someone showering in their clothes. Tasha Yar needs Counselor Troy's advice on clothes. Uh, Yar got a snoot full. Lieutenant Tasha Yar shows off her <laughs> rock hard abs and Yar was abandoned when she was five years old. Wesley feels strange, but also good. And lastly, data leaks when you prick him. <laughs> I um, only drew one thing for this episode. Oh, Den Denise. And this is this was it right there. Woohoo, baby. <laughs> really good. That's uh, everybody, right. everybody just listening in, you guessed it. Sirach drew <laughs> Denise's outfit and nailed it. I, I was like, there's only one thing worth drawing in this episode. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, you, you were looking that extremely that high in that. I was like, I was jealous of uh, Brent Spiner in that outfit. <laughs> <laughs> in that hollow suite i was like wow um but there were really like a lot of other moments you mentioned snootful uh i thought uh picard was hilarious in this there were moments where he just 
his frustration and his disgust with Wesley is is just like it's on a it's might be my favorite thing to watch in this show. I want to see him do that as but many Picard times as possible. himself is a snootful. That is the snootiest captain we've ever yeah. had. And on that <laughs> subject, can I show you what did you guys hear when B- Beverly comes up to Picard Beverly, yes. and she she kind of saunters up to him and he he clears his throat in the most hilarious he goes the funniest I laughed so hard I almost collapsed. <laughs> I know. And so of course I have to uh share this moment now. Of course I, I recorded it on my phone very quickly just because we all deserve to hear it once more. But it goes a little something like this. Okay, <laughs> okay one one more time for everybody heard, who wants to hear the, the the giggle hum, whatever he's doing. I heard it too. I heard it. <laughs> I want I want that when we uh, anyway, that's, that's like a that's like a, a bad ADR in a porn or something. Like oh, what is he doing? Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> and, she, and she's like, <laughs> that's like two frogs <laughs> mating, like two toads, you know, like a toad. Like it's like, <laughs> and the other one's like. <laughs> that was actually uh, pulled from National Geographic. The, uh, <laughs> the <poem. laughs> but there were there were all kinds of like verbiage plays on words that I, I was like, what's mm-hmm. going on in this episode? Gene threw a whole lot of stuff. Did I hear Counselor Troy said any oral captain? Any oral captain? That's what I heard. I I had to rewind it a few times. How did I miss that? <laughs> Me too. He was like, he was like, what is it? Is it uh is it you know this? Is it that? And she's any oral captain. Uh, that's what I heard. Any oral. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> And she wasn't infected yet at that point. Yeah, so, that's why I was. <laughs> where's she coming from? Yeah, I was like, "What is this episode?" And then they did the whole suck and blow out of the hatch. Uh, that's they did do that. Mm-hmm. I, I'm like, so what kind of what is what kind of wordplay are they sneaking into? Yeah, right. <laughs> well, with Gene Roddenberry, it's certainly not out of the question that those were deliberate mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. oh yes uh, but i love how angry picard gets with with wesley it's he's the acting captain and then the look on his face is he's like <laughs> he oh. is so disgusted with him i know uh it's so funny actually it's just hilarious but they well, will get our first beverly yeah, he's just he's just losing control of, you know, everything around him and the guy who, who is, you know, so in control. And, yes. uh, you know, it's just he doesn't. I mean, I think that's where that <clears throat> comes from. He's just lost. I, actually, my one of my favorite scenes by him in this episode was when he's talking to Wesley and he has to hold back how he really wants to talk to him. And he's like, no, well, Wesley, no, we know we have a problem. And, uh, and, you know, uh, and, and he's trying to not say, give me the shit back, you little, <laughs> you little shit. shit. Right. Yeah. Right. I just with one backhand, I got you. Yeah. You know? yeah. He wants then, to. So when he badly. gave him the hypo spray and he just like storms off all mad. <laughs> yes. Yes, the kid just saved the day, you know, a little bit. Yeah, so, yeah they, you know, they go, we have to acknowledge him in the log, you know. Yeah, and then he said it's only fair. And then he still was upset about it, though, even though he's going to acknowledge him and everything. He gave him the spray was like, and gave him the look of disgust. So every time, it's just I just laugh every time he, he gives that look of disgust. Uh, there once was a young lady from Venus. Okay. Whose body... <laughs> that was a limerick, by the way. They made sure to let us know. They're like, what? It's just a limerick. <laughs> yeah. But scary. the look of disgust. Okay, that's enough. For you. <laughs> He's very wow. good at, at just that's having enough. Like the uh, that's enough of that. He's, the, he's probably as good as it gets of the that's enough of that kind of facial expression and tone. Uh, had me laughing like crazy. Right after that, 
Data says, did I do something wrong? And Worf says, I do not understand their humor either. Mm-hmm. And we know that eight years later, he's talking with Jadzia Dax and saying like he gets the the humor and he gets the joke with her. So that was reminded me of that. It only took him eight years. <laughs> to figure out jokes, yeah. I wanted you to, you said you were going to get a little bit into this, uh, that second yeah. scene with you, uh, Denise. What, what, what were you going to kind of get into with that? With um, wh- which, which one? It, it was the moment where essentially you walk back on the bridge. Yeah. And I love the moment where as Data kind of looks at you like how guys look, you know, after <laughs> it goes down. No, right? Uh, and you give him this look like she, actually there's a she sigh. dogs him so hard, man. <laughs> you were at first you sigh, and the sigh was loud. I had to play it back. I was like, you like <sighs> <laughs> I love the sigh. It was like a oh god, this guy here he comes with this face, the face. Don't give me the face. I don't want to the see the face. face. <laughs> the post face. Oh, yeah, the right? face. She's so and naughty. You, Tasha. And you shut it down so hard and so I good. And I love I love that too. Um, because you're like, mm-hmm. no, don't give me that face. I don't want to see that face again. Mm-hmm. You're gonna delete delete this from <laughs> your <laughs> until further notice. <laughs> until further notice, right? you're deleting it. Well, what you'll see, you'll see later in a, another episode down the line you'll see a direct correlation to that. Oh. I don't want to, I don't want to give it away, nice. but. Okay. Um, so this and, is kind of a foreshadow of a, of a future moment. Yes, exactly. Okay. Exactly. Mm. They'll, they'll, they'll connect. I'll connect the dots. Ah, great. Um, and, and I, in the, in the future episode, it, it it was a completely improv moment on my part. It wasn't even scripted, but it throws back to this reference in It Never Happened. Ah, that's so cool because I, I don't remember this. Yeah. And so I'm looking yeah, forward you'll, to seeing you'll, it. When we get there, I'll, I'll, I'll make it all clear, but mm-hmm. I don't want to go there yet because we haven't seen the episode. Yeah, that, that sigh and then the It Never Happened was just, it was classic. Um, but there was just it was just a good out of character thing, and it's funny because um, I wrote an episode of Deep Space Nine and pitched it back in the day, and one of my storylines was uh, the the characters were out of character because they were addicted to the substance that mm-hmm. uh, Quark was putting in the drinks, and I had Dax kind of playing the exact role that you play in this episode uh. and i remember when i pitched it to them they were like oh it's just too similar to next generation and i had never watched this there so, it is oh. and now that i'm watching it i'm like okay it was similar because the way i had dax behaving was similar to how you're behaving in this episode right you're just you just you know you find yourself intoxicated the way she would have found herself intoxicated and it would loosen her up to a degree of, of being like the way you behave. So I thought, oh man, when they told me that, I'm thinking, how could it be anything like another episode? Now I'm watching it, I'm like, oh, it's pretty much well, exactly know, like <laughs> It's so interesting that too, that, um, you know, a, most, well, all the women that got infected. Yeah. Yeah, it, it 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 was sexualized. Yes. Okay. And so, they were the know, aggressors. If you'll notice, they were yeah. the absolutely. Mm-hmm. They right. were aggressively sexual. It's interesting. Right? Well, one of Gene's fantasies also playing out in this. You know <laughs> this episode. Yeah, I, I, I'm sure a few. <laughs> because I noticed, you know? because I noticed that it didn't happen like that with the men who were infected. So. Didn't happen with uh, Le- Lavar. Didn't happen with Jordan. Lavar, with Riker. His, his, yeah, and Riker really didn't get. I don't think anything no. yet at that point. But but even the guys, you know, that were playing with the chips. Yeah, right. And, the, and look, they were all they were it all affected. Just, 
it affected Picard like that, but he was able to contain himself. He was like, oh, I better not do it. You know, like he he was but, like less yeah. affected, maybe. I don't know. I think he was turned on by her doing it. I think I don't think he was really it was making him maybe, act yeah, like that. Maybe that's what it was. I yeah. think her acting like that was making him respond in that kind of a way. Like he didn't need intoxication to respond that way. He just needed her to act that way. Well, <laughs> I, I thought it I thought it, it was like interesting that. too that there was a sort of awkward sexual tension be- between Picard and Crusher, you know? Like what like yeah. what a difference Mm-hmm. You know, with 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 Kirk, you know, Kirk right. is just all about sex, you know, at any yeah. given moment, you know, he's just comfortable in that place. He just exudes that kind of ease yeah. with women and and Picard. Not I felt not. Yeah, at all. he was mm-hmm. awkward. There were moments of awkward. Even, even when he waved and he did the wave <laughs> like this, he was like, OK. And I was I like, know. dude, that's that's the weirdo wave, bro. <laughs> the weirdo thought, wave. Man, I that's, really that's not the I'm a smooth operator wave, you know. That's the like, okay, yeah. nice to see you. <laughs> there wasn't anything, you know, no. going on there. I, I don't know what you wrote I, down you awkward know. too? Because I wrote it down in my notes. I awkward, wrote incredibly like, awkward sexually, Prusher and Picard. Yep. Yes. I wrote the same word, awkward. Yes. I mean, literally, because I felt like, uh, you know, first of all, uh, he said he walks in, he says Beverly, and then she says Jean Luc, and he's like, "Call me, you'll address me as." Ca-. I'm like, "Well, that's awkward off the top." <laughs> like, dude, yeah. If you, if you guys are in this kind of intimate space, you wish you were supposed to call you Captain in the bed. Like, come on. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> like like what? Yeah, I did too. I thought I thought, oh, this is like you know they're doing some horrible, you know, name calling, yeah. you know, foreplay or something, you know. Yeah, like, oh, you you can call me lieutenant, and I'll call hey, you, yeah, doctor, you know, and and you know, well, but he didn't play it that way. He played no. it more like more like, oh yes, I did address you like Beverly, and no, you shouldn't have addressed me. Like he was playing it a different way. Absolutely. Um, I and I was think... like, this is, why is he not a smooth operator? Especially, didn't they hook up in the past before? Like, Well, no, no. They, or they, did they suggest what, that they hooked? I, I thought it was a suggestion. It was, a, I mean, it, it was, it was set up to be some sort of. Love a, interest. A, a, love, yeah. A, 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 an unfolding of this. But. Right. My God, I. But I, I thought I the know. suggestion was that they uh, always had a thing for each other because you remember Picard said, "I knew your father" when he's talking about Wesley, and mm-hmm. it was kind of like, it was kind of like, I was around you when you were married to this other guy or whatever, and there was a thing that we had, but nothing played out because of whatever reasons. But I felt like there was always this, you know, I- there was always a thing between them. I think here would have been the perfect moment to introduce in episode two um, some, something that you could build on for six more seasons. Yeah. A, a sexual interest, tension, arousal, you know, that you could just drop the seed in, you know, f- right here. No pun intended, but, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. um, and but but it. it there was nothing about the two of them together that made makes any sense. Well, I think that was the intention. What you're saying is I think that was the intention in this second episode was to say, here are like some of the romantic storylines that will be playing out in the next few seasons. And he even says the last line he says is we'll be a fine crew if we avoid temptation. And so that's almost like a little wink to the audience of like, you're going to, we're going to have some temptation on this Island. Right. Which mm-hmm. is, which is wonderful to play and fun. Mm-hmm. And you know, you're, you're, are they, or aren't they, or, you know, wow, look at her. You know, you know what he means when he says that, you know, to her, any, any of those things, but I, I just found um, the, whatever they weren't they weren't comfortable chemistry. in their skins yet with each other they they didn't have they didn't have a chemistry going mm-hmm. yep I mean, and that's that's, you know, that's know. Picard I mean, in a nutshell right there 
<laughs> there he is. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yeah. I, I definitely felt like it was a missed opportunity. They, she could have easily had said something on the backstory and like, Oh, you know, you remember well, what about that time that we da 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 when 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 Jim died or whatever, whatever, you know? Or it and, would be revealed, you know, throughout yeah. the uh, upcoming seasons that, you know, the more but 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 just I think as an audience, you you would have been watching and you would have gone, Wow, there's something that's there's something here. You well, you know, know I did something. see something. And it was on Beverly's part, Beverly, or Bev. Um, and it was just a tiny little thing that she did. But I wanted to, I watched it like three or four times because it was so good. And it was right after he goes, <laughs> thing, and then he pulls away. You know, he says, I'm going to go do the thing and you do the thing. And he kind of, you know, whatever. She has this moment where she like salutes him, right? You know, playfully like salutes him. But... The look in her eyes was this beautiful, like loving. There was, there was, it was like a loving look more so than a sexual or romantic thing. And mm -hmm. I think that, I don't know if that's just what the actress decided to play or if that was a direction, but it showed so much more in that one little one or two second look that she gave him. And I thought, I thought that was the best look of the episode. It was so good. And it was so beautifully played. And there was that, it was a look of love, you know, and it was, it was just great. I hope mm -hmm. everybody goes and checks that, that one specific uh, moment by Gates where she nailed it, I thought. Mm -hmm. uh, and also um, I want to give credit to uh, Wesley. I thought he did a good job for uh, his age at this, you know, to have this kind of responsibility in the script this early on in the show. I thought he did a pretty good job. I know people are hard on him and stuff, but I was watching him. I thought he played it pretty well. And, you know, he played just enough annoying a little bit, but just enough uh, problem solving, smart. You know, he's a smart kid. That's basically mm -hmm. why I think most of the, the beef about his character was maybe that he was too smart. But, um, you know, I thought he did a good job in this. Uh, he looks like a a cute smart kid that's interested in trying to impress impress people is that he knows a lot of stuff about you know science so totally uh yeah. I, I i i bought his performance in this as well so i don't know how many opportunities i get to compliment him on his performance but i thought he did a very good job absolutely mm-hmm mm -hmm. uh what about uh there was also you know troy had her moments Worf had his moment. Everybody kind of got their their little moments. Oh, there was another. Oh God, I just I laughed so much in this episode. There was another thing preceding. I know I'm obsessed with Picard's throat, but preceding that, when he walks in, did you notice that he did a little skippy do? Like when he oh, walked, yeah. he he's the the doors open and he walks. He does like a little whoopsie. I don't know if you guys yes. caught yes. that. I yeah. What? And I, what and the I heck thought, was that? what an awkward, I, I guess he was under, but see, that's where I'm kind of going, <laughs> Denise, I'm agreeing with you. It wasn't clear what, okay, so if that's, yeah, here it is. Yeah, he did a <laughs> little. funny. He did a, a Lord of the Dance kind of uh, yeah. Michael Flatley yeah. type of footwork. And I, and I thought, is that is he implying that that's how he acts when he's drunk? He starts he starts turning maybe, into Michael Flatley. But I also <laughs> thought that maybe it wasn't performance. I thought that maybe it was like the doors were closing on him a little too early, so he kind of jumped through yeah, them thought, a little I bit. I thought that was him under the effect of this thing, like starting to weigh down on him, and he was starting yeah. to because he did a little other little quirky little moves there with like you know, smiling and little hand gestures and stuff where he was trying to show that he was under this intoxication or whatnot. But I don't know. I just felt like, I don't know how he was playing it, but it, yeah. was, it was a little bit awkward to me. Mm -hmm. It was a little bit awkward. So you know, we've only... 
Oh, Sorry, I was just going to say, it could be one of those things that, you know, just was impulsive in the mm-hmm. moment and no one, no one caught, you know, no one, uh, the director didn't catch it or, you know, I, I mean, it, it, it's things like that will happen. I mean, I, yeah. at one point, Beverly kind of like loses the tri the the tricorder thing for a minute you know again we're so fresh with these props and all this stuff I think she gets quite better <laughs> through the season <laughs> but in episode two she kind of opens it and, and oops it kind of fumbles in her hand you know and and it, yeah. working these things you know mm-hmm. I would have loved I would also like to have been there when they're filming Brent put in those chips in those slots oh. I, I know at some point Brett was like, seriously, you don't have it already? Because he had to do it for so long since they sped that up. So right. he's just sitting there doing this right. for 45 minutes. They're going on lunch, leaving the cameras on him while he's just still going. <laughs> they just brought Brent in that day, all day. That's yeah. all they did. You know? Call time, 3 a.m. Yeah. 3 a.m. Uh, Right? So we do uh, have to run over to our free for all in just a minute. But before we do that, shall we do the home run of the day? Oh, wait. There it is. The mm-hmm. home run of the day. Oh, uh, Sirak, who do you think deserves the home run mm-hmm. of the day or hit the home run of the day? I should say. Ah, uh, you know, it's um, I, I would say my favorite thing of this episode was the Tasha Yar uh, experience. <laughs> and so experience. That's just, <laughs> the yeah, Tasha Yar experience. experience. Yes. It was an experience. And that was, that was my home run for this episode. I love those scenes mm-hmm. uh, with uh, Dana and Tasha. I, I thought those were classic. Mm-hmm. Everybody just I, I, like listening I said, in. I found myself rewinding like four or five times. I had to watch it over and over again. The facial expressions he was making, like fully functional. That's <laughs> why you rewound it five times. Uh, uh, everybody uh, just listening in. If you want to get the full experience, like Sirak did, you should watch this so you could see the gigantic <laughs> smile Sirak had when he said that. <laughs> but, uh, what about you, Denise? Wow. Oh, it's hard <laughs> this one because it's 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 so um, personal, you know, and, and it it was such a, a huge moment for my character in this, you know, this episode. So, you know, I'm, I don't know. I'm, I'm, it's between, it's between Tasha Yar and Bill Tice. (laughs) (laughs) Good teamwork. What an outfit. What an outfit. You wore it. I know. I I know. Nobody can wear it better. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to say my abs. Oh nice. yeah. Abs. Home run, a plus, a plus. Mm. That's a home run. I don't know. I don't know how many laps you were running or sit-ups you were doing, but it paid <laughs> off and it's something you can look oh, back yeah. at years later and be proud of forever. Cause it was great. <laughs> I mean, really that's, you know, it's not easy to, to stay in super shape Ooh. and the, you know, oh. especially when they spring a script on you ahead of time, you, you're like, oh shit! How much time do I have? Uh, You're. I'm wearing what? Yeah. Oh god. Okay. Yeah. So for me, and it's then you, no, had that, it's... you had that line. It was like, but I got out of my uniform for uh, you, Data. I was like, oh, <laughs> that was so good. Great. Love yeah. it. So for me, my home run. No, uh, no surprise here. The the home run hitter was Picard's throat. Uh, <laughs> I loved it so much. <laughs> That I want, <laughs> I want, I want to see if we could add in post every time we go into the like the the audio cue of every time we go into the home run. It's not like a. I want to yeah. hear like a or something. <laughs> that is, yeah, I thank you for really highlighting that for me too, Ryan. Yeah. I, you know, I, I, I kind of. I kind of I kind of stumbled <laughs> through it going, I, I, no, he didn't really do that. Right. It uh, makes you think, uh, did I just hear, yeah. what, did, what did I right. just hear? Was that a bullfrog? No, I, I heard it too. And, I, and and that was to me, one of the other little playful things. I thought he was being playful when he was adding these things. Like the so romantic. 
How sexy. Yeah. <laughs> 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 That's his oh, move right there. Doing that Women forever. love this. Check it yeah. out. <laughs> uh, okay. Oh, so uh, let's give a very special thanks, of course, to Homer Frizzell, Dr. Anne Marie Siegel, Eve England out in Wales, Yvette Blackman, Tom Carmen, aka Skillet, TJ Jackson Bay out in Missouri, Bill Victor Arukin. <laughs> <laughs> uh Titus Moeller, Darlena Marie, Dr. Muhammad Noor, Tierney C. Diekman, Anna Post, Rex A. Wood, Anil O. Palat, Joe Balserati, Mike Gu, DQ, Neil Akasaka, Justine Norton Kurtzen, Dr. Stephanie Baker, Carrie Schwent, Faith Howell, Edward Foltz, my live from Tokyo, Matt Boardman, Chris McGee. And Justin Weir, and of course, Dr. Susan V. Gruner. All right. So everybody oh, stick man. around for the free for all. I can't figure out what that reminds me of, Sirock. When you did that, when you did your <laughs> you definitely <laughs> remind me. Okay, I'll figure it out. We'll be right back, everybody, on the seventh rule. Hey everybody, welcome back to the seventh rule. This is the free for all. We were extremely serious for the last five to 10 minutes. There was no giggling allowed and now we are recording. So look who's here joining us. Dr. Stephanie Baker is here. Carrie Schwent is also here. Lots of cool Star Trek faces on her shirt, actually. Lots of ladies. Nice. Uh, Melissa Longo is also here wearing one of her chat pack shirts. Uh, Dr. Susan V. Gruner is here as well. Mike Goo Esquire, if you like, is hanging with Mr. Cooper. Dr. Muhammad Noor is also here. Chris McGeek is here. Nice name. Excellent. <laughs> Dr. Anne-Marie Siegel is chilling outside Hi. of space. TJ Jackson Bay is out in Missouri in a hollow suite. Mai is live in Tokyo. Tierney C. Diekman is hanging out on a cool chair that looks like the 70s. Matt Boardman, the VFX <laughs> artist, is hanging with us. And Katie Carr is in a red shirt, red shirt. And a few of us have Tasha Yar hairdos right now, <laughs> including Katie. All right. So, oh, real quickly. Let your head be, your hair down. Let Jake Cisco guesses hair. the IMDb score. Mm. Oh, mm. the naked now. Oh man, I, I don't know um the standards by which they go on this, so I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna say seven point eight. I, I don't know the the eighty standards of of grading, so I'm gonna have to <laughs> kind of readjust myself. Uh, but, and. Anybody else have any well, guesses? What did uh, he start? Like, what was that really somebody could have voted on this? 20 years ago. Yeah. Certainly oh, not 35. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm voted for a 10. <laughs> <laughs> like, the I second I got IMDb, so... I'm going to go for I a high six, I think. I'd say closer to seven. Ah. Based on everybody else, but I, I would put it closer to a 10, but IMDb might be closer to a seven. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, it is a 6.5 on IMDb, which is ruthless, everybody. So go change oh, that. By vote. Also, does anybody know why Paramount Plus <laughs> says this came out October 5th and IMDb and everywhere else says October 3rd? Because Paramount are liars. <laughs> Paramount, Paramount has always had some uh, number issues. <laughs> <laughs> number issues. <laughs> it's zero, adding zeros. And Eve England out in Wales is joining us. There she is. Uh, More like taking away zeros, by the way. Uh, <laughs> they don't add them. <laughs> Very true. Uh, oh, also, did you guys catch the non-appearance mentions? I got two. Just one. I saw Kirk. I, I knew Kirk, but oh, yeah. other than that. Yeah, Kirk. The other one was extremely subtle, and it's a repeat from last week. Beverly Crusher mentions being husbandless. Oh. oh. That counts. That counts as one. <laughs> <laughs> Jack Crusher. Anyway. So uh, 
Melissa Longo, can you please start us off on the right track? Get sh- right this ship. What do you think of this episode? Well, um, I could see this episode being a guilty pleasure. Um, <laughs> Uh, well, I, I really like that um, this show obviously isn't afraid to take risks, and uh, it's a, a risky choice for a second episode, uh, which is not necessarily a bad thing. Um, and uh, it, it, it kind of showcased the cast's chemistry, which they really have a good chemistry the entire cast, um, especially these two. Gosh. Wow. Ooh. Even though. <laughs> <Spicy>. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Some people find that attractive, but um, <laughs> <laughs> no, but, uh, but so far I have to say the standout character for me in the first two episodes is Tasha Yar and not just because Denise is here and not because she looked fantastic in this episode I mean wow stunning you are stunning <laughs> just gorgeous uh, but but she's she's already got so much development under her belt in this first episode and again with taking risks they made her security officer in the late 80s that's a bold choice for mm-hmm. to have a woman as a security officer for an entire spaceship she's the head of that so that's pretty awesome and then we know that she's overcome a uh, a difficult past and and um and then as we see in this episode she's also a human being with appetites which is you know heightened by the pesky virus but <laughs> but uh, I, I like seeing all that and and you deliver it so well Denise so um yeah yeah Tasha Yar for the win right now for me <laughs> that's all I have right now <laughs> great stuff great points mm-hmm. yeah. uh Dr. Stephanie Baker how are you cool generations poster behind you i believe that is mm, thank you hi i uh, i really really like this episode i think because i love the frozen orgy scene in the beginning <laughs> where everybody's <laughs> naked i just i just i just love it I, again like melissa says it's such so risky all the the wild behavior i I, I I grew up on TOS and there's a lot of TOS music uh, in this episode. Mm-hmm. A lot of like of the themes that remind me of TOS. And I, I like that as well, almost as part of a transition at the time from TOS to TNG, mm-hmm. like a callback to TOS. And I know it connects to another episode, but I let other people talk about that. Um, for me, I really love Wesley. Um, I love how he's, um, uh, I just, I, I, he's, he's always been my favorite character. So I love how he's, how he's portrayed in this episode. And, um, but I also like about this story is that every character, there's a moment when, you know, they got affected and then they do something and, and Tasha Yar, when she does this with her hair in the beginning, then, you know, oh, she's getting hot something's wrong with her. You know, Jordy got hot. Wesley says, um, why is it so hot in here? And I love all those moments. Everybody, and you realize, uh uh-oh, everybody's getting affected. And then um, in the end, uh, Wesley kind of saves the day with the repulsor, which Mm -hmm. he does quite a bit. Yeah. Yeah. I noticed the sound effect too when they were actually physically touching somebody. Yep. There was a subtle sound effect that they were yes. using in the background, like maracas, yeah, a little buzzing sound. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. Like I'm giving it to you. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny you it'd mentioned be nice the if, we, if you could hear that during COVID, like hey, you just gave it to me. I can't. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> It would be kind of you, audio you cue. You mean, Sorok, you didn't hear that? <laughs> no, I didn't hear it. Oh, man, I didn't even listen to it. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, Mr. Mike Goo Esquire is here. 
as well. Uh, have you seen this episode recently? And if so, what'd you think of it? By the way, Paramount Plus has it as episode three. You're right about this, Denise. There's all kinds of number issues here. <laughs> but <laughs> what do you think, Mike? Because oh, sorry. Good. Oh. Did okay. you have a? Did, um, did I you have a reason for it, Matt. Did you know what it was? I, I think that's because they count the first episode. They they've broken it up into two parts, so you have Encounter Far Point parts mm-hmm. one and two. So I think they count that as two episodes. Yeah, but it's just one video. They're so confused. right, right. But I think in the way that they catalog it, I think they made it a third or a, a two parter. Got it. Anyway, uh, sorry about that, Mike. What do no, you think? not at all. Well, I just wanted to remark. I mean, I don't. I know the Prodigy review was yesterday, but wow, that's that's definitely the the Nickelodeon version, and this this is like this is the adult <laughs> version. Um, <laughs> but yeah, um, I would say. I was just a little confused why Will was the last to be affected if it was all being mm. like touch driven and but also gravity based. Um, and Troy called him the, Bill, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. Good catch. A one time ever. <laughs> yeah, they didn't actually call him that later on. Mm-hmm. I wrote that. Uh oh. When you hear your name ah. called like that, it's like, uh oh. <laughs> yeah, that's it. So did you love the episode or were you just more confused by it? Both. Can I be both? <laughs> Definitely. Usually. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Dr. I Sue. Was, uh, what was the name of the, the engineer who was in the... There's Shimoda. Um, McDougal <laughs> and Shimoda. McDougal like, and Shimoda. Mm-hmm. The blonde one? Okay. McDougal, is that her name? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was the yeah. chief engineer. It's funny, she and I were in acting class together. What? Wow. Oh, really? Remember I told you there's all you these little odd little things yeah. about this episode? <laughs> so Brooke Bundy uh, is her name, the actress's name. And um, yeah, she and I were, were uh, in acting class many, many years um, together. And I, I, it was just a lovely surprise to see her you know do an episode wow that's really cool i was i was awesome. thinking i was thinking from her perspective she would be like how come nobody has the hots for me like i'm not she didn't get the 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 no but other have... people around her had it so mm-hmm. i would i, I would, know if i was her i'd be like how come you guys are not like <laughs> what am I, chop live over here? <laughs> right? yeah. Well, it's like you know stick? somebody who's not drunk at a party and everybody else is drunk. Hmm. You remember too that uh, guy um, Tasha is walking down the the corridor and she grabs this yeah. you know, guy and nails him <laughs> with a kiss. Yeah. So this is really weird. That 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 uh, actor um, is a guy named uh, Kenny Koch, and my best best girlfriend in middle school is married to him wow <laughs> okay <laughs> melissa stark and kenny koch were married and at the time at the time yes, of this episode at the time okay. of this episode and okay. um i had no idea he was playing this part <laughs> and you know we get to the set and not only is he playing the part i've got to kiss him <laughs> and it's like oh no, of all people you know this is oh, uh, too awkward. much yeah little it's okay we got through it all right well uh dr susan v gruner is here hanging out in outer space what's up how you been what do you think of this episode I remember it very well when it first came out, and I just watched it a couple of days ago. And you started a meme, Denise, that's lasted all these years about data being fully functional. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And I mean, that's a thing. We Everybody still talks about it. It was just fabulous. Uh, I liked it. Uh, I think the the cast is just trying to get to gel together, uh, fit together, work together. 
But I thought it was funny. And I've read all the stuff that's been written about it. And I disagree. I actually liked it. I mm -hmm. loved Wesley, too. When people say that they don't like Wesley, it really pisses me off. <laughs> but uh, I thought it was funny. And uh, I actually enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. I enjoyed every second. I laughed my ass off. And the Beverly, when Picard goes in and says Beverly, I had to tape it. Yeah. <laughs> I had to record it and send it to Ryan. Yeah. I was literally laughing so hard, my stomach was. I, I kept thinking, is Picard, is he Ryan or is it Ryan Picard? I wish, man. <laughs> my hero. So uh, <laughs> speaking of my hero, Dr. Muhammad Noor is also here hanging out with us, gracing us with his presence. Um, what do you think of this episode and how much did you love it? Well, I'm honored to be here. I, I enjoyed it a lot, actually. I remember it when it first came out, like Sue was saying too. You know, it's light, it's funny. Um, I liked I, I, both when it originally came out and watching again now, I liked seeing the sort of tie to an original series episode, but not repeating the episode. Because sometimes when you see these ties, it's just like, we're just going to do the same thing again. But no, it was it was a solidly different plot, even though there was a, the same problem. You know, the, the approach was different. The way it was taken, the episode was different. I thought that was really cool. Um, I noticed everybody seemed, and this is something maybe Denise can comment on too, everybody seemed much more comfortable that in, in their mm -hmm. roles than in the pilot episode. At least that was my take. And I caught what I thought were a couple of sort of unscripted smiles every now and at the very end of scenes. Where like it was like you panning away from somebody, you see them so I kind of grin. And that actually made me really happy. I, I saw I was like, oh, I like that they're happy. So I, I thought it was great overall. And, and the, the one question I came away with was, um, what was the name of that engineer, Anne-Marie? He said, James Shimoda. Moda. Yeah, Shimoda. Uh, I was wondering what his inhibition was, because supposedly this was something that was releasing really inhibition. Was his inhibition he didn't play enough like dominoes as a kid? I, was, I wasn't <laughs> sure. What, what was yeah. <laughs> but I, you know, overall, yeah. it was fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When he gets drunk, he turns into a four-year-old. <laughs> <laughs> Who doesn't? <laughs> Well, like uh, when you're saying, you know, the women, the the women when they got infected, all became these sexualized, you know, beasts and aggressive on the hunt, and you know, the guys are, you know, just Children. laughing and giggling and playing games, and certainly Jordy didn't have that reaction as well. Just the women, mm -hmm. kind of interesting. Uh, 80s take yep. shout out yeah. to gene roddenberry yeah uh, <laughs> <laughs> and all those other men that were uh believe me uh in the offices back then so uh tj jackson bay is here he's the dominoes champion of 1987 1988 <laughs> 1989 and right. 2017 uh, <laughs> how'd you feel about this episode well um you missed a non-appearance mention, by the way. Oh, tell us. It's me. <laughs> I was in this episode. Yeah, you're wondering, what is he talking Somehow about? Somehow I question your sincerity. So before Data started talking about the young lady from Venus, he said, or he or Worf said, uh, there was an Please. announcement about a lecture on metaphysics. Who do you think was delivering the lecture? Me. Yeah. <laughs> it's very meta. Uh, so that's awesome. Yeah, I caught the Bill Riker too. So you know, I wonder is that like is that like Deanna's like bedroom name for for Will? <laughs> really to kick out of her calling him <laughs> Bill or, or, or what? And also, I noticed that her um, feelings were enhanced by what she was receiving empathically from the rest of the crew so she was like extra ready to go <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, and the funny thing is uh Riker I think out of all the people that was infected was the one that kept his head on the most straight uh yeah. followed by Wesley um especially at the end because he's the one that that solved the puzzle he solved the problem um and, you know, it's just kind of a delight to watch, you know, a young Will Wheaton um, step up in this episode as we see him do, you know, so many times, no spoilers, but, um, but 
you know, really awesome. Um, of course, you know, as a kid watching this show, I identified with him just like I identified with uh, Jake Sisko. Uh, you know, he was like my representation on this ship. And, um, you know, with, with all the wonder and the wow of what they experienced. Uh, so that's that. Also, I want you to know that I have pores and humans have pores. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> You know, that was one thing when I was watching Wesley, I was thinking, hey, that's cool. He got to work on different like science projects. I could have never had uh, Jake working on like a diorama or some kind of like <laughs> something that he was making. He wrote he, stories. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I could have done some stuff when I was in, the, in school. Mm -hmm. But I, I thought that was kind of a cool idea, that little beam, tractor beam thing. That he made. I thought that was a cool idea. It's fun. So, uh, up next, we have somebody whose favorite line in this episode and maybe any Star Trek series is you, Jewel. It's Dr. <laughs> Anne-Marie Siegel. <laughs> <laughs> well, like every second of this episode is so iconic and highly quotable. So I just, I mean, I can't get enough of it. It's so wonderful. And, you know, just like going back to everybody saying it's like pushes, it kind of was like pushing boundaries. Like the shocking thing is how it really reads is that today. But then like, when you read like Mark Ullman's um, oral history and listen to some of the Star Trek historians, it was actually viewed as really safe because it was written by like TOS people and they were just kind of like reusing a thing. And so this was their safe episode, <laughs> which is so shocking. I just love it. <laughs> Good old DC Fontana. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like she did the teleplay. I'm not, I can't remember the guy's name who wrote it, but Definitely some of the well, that was, episodes that's the script. thought were really saved. Oh, so yeah. She and the other guy uh well, like the story, story by, by, and then she wrote the script. With him and Gene Roddenberry. <laughs> cool, well, great like stuff. When, when when Data was talking to Picard and he said, We are more alike than unalike. And and I thought <laughs> he caught himself with his finger kind of up at him and I was like, <laughs> so good. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Every second. I'm like, dude, blow your roll, man. There are a couple episodes, though, that are like, is that you, you, I mean, I'm sure I'm not the only one who used to watch with their parents as a really little girl. And like some of the scenes, it would be so embarrassing <laughs> and uncomfortable. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but it, it's OK. It's so good. <laughs> I, th I, I thought they missed the moment to have Data smoking a cigarette right after that. <laughs> Did you see him yeah, lounging on the bridge, though? Oh, God, his walk back on the bridge. Oh, yeah. Yes. I mean, this is, like, also one of the most heartbreaking moments ever when he's, like, so happy at the end and Tashi R has to tell him it never Keep happened. It up. Yeah. Tasha. Oh, I like it. Data. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> there was that moment, too, afterwards where Data was super lounging on the bridge all, like, chilling. <laughs> Um, <laughs> Carrie Schwent is also chilling. She's laid back. How are you, Carrie? What do you think of this episode? It is ha probably hands down one of my favorite episodes, probably of all of the Star Trek series. I mean, wow. it is just too damn fun. And I had forgotten about the da data starting to recite the limerick when I made my decision to switch from haikus to limericks. <laughs> So I'll start off with that, and don't worry, it's it's still PG. Yeah. <laughs> okay. A virus comes back to the ship that sends the crew on quite a trip. Things get out of hand. Wesley seizes command. And Data fixes the mess with the chips. <laughs> yeah, so much fun. Be absolutely beginning to end, and Data actually has my favorite line of the episode when he's talk talking about the the scene you were talking about, Sirak, and he goes, you prick me. Do I not leak? Because <laughs> he, he wouldn't bleed. He, he would, in fact, leak. <laughs> and then he, Picard walks away, and then he goes to lounge and falls over. Ab absolutely. And then... That was great. My Yeah. Melissa having my favorite scene behind her that is just so much. Yeah. 
so much fun absolutely beginning to beginning to end Mm -hmm. uh great stuff check this out look at data come on that's that's after (laughs) (laughs) Worf is saying something Riker's holding together Picard's trying his best data's like hey hey life is good (laughs) Cigarette, well, anybody? Yeah. The guy You're over right, there is running. Uh, also, Chris McGeek is here. Great, a.k.a. Uh, how are you? What would you think? Oh, it brought back so many memories watching this one. And everyone has already called out so many of the great uh, quotables throughout this episode. Um, and one of the things, of course, that everyone caught, which I'm... I'm very uh, pleased that everyone saw that uh, Troy called Riker Bill. And I think it's the only time she ever does that in the whole series. I also found it interesting that we ne- never got introduced to any chief engineer <laughs> in the pilot episode in you know, Encounter at Firepoint. It was in this episode where we first see a chief engineer, McDougal. I'm sure she'll be around for a long time. Um, and the uh, I don't know if anyone else noticed this, but as Data was was perusing doing his research into the uh you know someone taking a shower in his or her clothes as the screens kept flipping by there's one frame in particular you have to be really fast to pause it you'll see an image of what looks like a bird but it's actually got gene roddenberry's face on it so it's the great bird of the galaxy yep. there mm-hmm. <laughs> oh. i think i read that um, somewhere and uh let's see there's the several other notes here but i'll save most of those for the for the after party uh but i one thing i will say maybe it's a slightly mild uh, uh criticism and it's not just about this episode at all it's throughout the entire episode throughout the entire series excuse me uh i don't know about you guys but if i were serving on a starship that's going to be out in deep space for years I w- would probably want hanging on my walls pictures of Earth or maybe some abstract photos. Pro- probably not more pictures of deep space. And I found it so weird that throughout the entire show, there are all these pictures hanging on the wall are for deep space, even though you're already in space. <laughs> and I, did, I wondered if anyone ever, ever picked up on that. Hmm. Um, lastly, of course, my, my, uh, phrase of the episode, there are way too many to, to, to choose from, but I, I picked one that, that no one else has sent, uh, seems to have picked up yet. And that is, I feel strange, but also good. Yeah. Yeah. Lastly. Nailed it. This kid knows what alcohol is all about now. Just like that. <laughs> Heck yeah. Uh, you know, who else does my live from Tokyo knows all about sake uh how are you my what do you think of this episode good i liked i liked the straight up science reference at the beginning with the Konstantin Tsiolkovsky reference mm-hmm. he's known as the father of space flight that was pretty cool um the other thing i felt when I was, when I was watching i was listening to picard he talks about when the action resumes after the title sequence he talks about um downloading the data as opposed to downloading and then later on, Data talks about that when he's downloading the stuff from the TOS uh, phenomenon, when they, when they had this situation before, he talks about downloading instead of downloading. And it just, it, it reminded me that time has passed since we knew about FTP only, and now we know about a lot of other things. We say downloading as a verb um, differently than it was at that time, and made me feel a bit like a 37, to be honest. So it was kind of cool. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, and then I had a question for Denise, because that picture that's behind Ryan with the curly Q hairstyle, I know that it's that, that we've talked about looking like Christopher Reeve, but didn't, did you guys gas in the dressing room on that? Like, did you like walk out of the dressing room going, we represent the lollipop guild, lollipop <laughs> guild. It just looks like them coming out of the panels yeah. <laughs> covered in Wizard of Oz, you know? That's funny. I, mean, God, I you know, I'm, I'm. I'm trying to rack my memory as to how that whole thing developed the hair style, because, you know, you've got the whole costume ensemble going on, mm-hmm. you know, as, as an event, you know, and so they, they had to, they had to do something with the hair to, you know, suggest we are really 
we are really going, you know, out there um, yeah. completely. And I just, I, the, the, I mean, it's one thing you, you could have just totally slicked back her hair and, and, and it would have been work. But the fact that this was added is just yeah. such a cool little embellishment, you know? Yeah. And I wish I, 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 I hold no responsibility for that. I'm sure it was, you know, our, our incredible hair team at that, at that point, you know? Um, Hmm. But yeah, it's it's quite a quite a look going on there, isn't it? Somebody who watched a lot of Wizard of Oz thought that one up. I think that was yeah. I, I you know, you're the, that's, I've, that's the first time I've heard that one, but I like it. I thought the makeup was on point too, though. Like the makeup looks mm-hmm. freaking mm-hmm. stellar oh, as yeah. well. Uh, Michael Westmore, man, that was fantastic. Uh, Even that's our guy. Yeah. Uh, you know who else's makeup always looks stellar? Of course, I'm talking about Tierney C. Diekman. How are you, Tierney? What do you think of this episode? Hello. And what's I'm your gonna... secret? Which secret? A makeup secret. Please. Yeah. Let's, let's skip. Let's get past. <laughs> oh, years of being forced into a performance competition. Um, you learn to do that stuff yourself. Uh, anyway, I... I... <laughs> Lots of mixed takes on this episode. We'll save it for the after segment. But uh, I definitely, I like hearing that a lot of my literal word for word notes have been mentioned, um, starting with Stephanie. Frozen orgies. Oh, my. Um, And and Chris, thank you for for noticing the equivalent of space motel art. I it it gets me every time of why would you want that just I like I actually have that written down of walking into Tasha's room and seeing that or maybe it was uh Troy's of just space motel it's too much um and and a few other things uh Melissa you had said just of how fantastic uh your performance Denise is in this and not just because we don't say that just because you're here with us it's really what takes it home because i i did go and i watched the i watched the naked time the original series episode as well as this one um cool and uh i disagree a little bit with you baham and i'm sorry i love you so much but um i found that it followed it a little too beat for beat in places and they just kind of turned it around updated it a bit for the time uh, it's a lot more comedic in places, which is fantastic that the Picard noise, the Picard hops and data, and <laughs> it's just fantastic. It really is great. Um, but what I loved in the first one was how when they were intoxicated, they weren't just acting like drunken idiots and everybody's different when they're drunk and it showed the vulnerabilities and we learned a lot about this cast, which was still very new uh, for TOS at the time as well. And it helped develop like Spock, for instance, what was deep inside him, how Kirk felt about other, you know, people on his ship. We'll just leave it at that. But uh, we got only a little snippet of that with this. And the most we got was through Tasha. And it, I mean, given that she had this, her character had this extreme upbringing, um, if you want to call it an upbringing, uh, through abandonment. And I think this is our first hearing of rape gangs um, and everything you went through. It makes sense that she goes into Troy's room. She wants to feel pretty and express her own beauty and feel gentleness and love and safety and data is data is perfect for that i mean you can trust him that's what we were talking about Mm -hmm. he's just i mean yes it makes absolute sense and then jordy lavar's performance in this he's very small in screen time in comparison but it's kind of heartbreaking when he says help me help me to see he wants to just see like everyone else does even if it's less in comparison he's probably been told that his whole life but you can see more with your visor than humans do it makes you better when you all know probably deep down he's thinking that they're thinking yeah but he can't see like the rest of us do he can't see a human rainbow so there's some really 
uh, good depth that we get for these characters that are very new, even with all of this humor that comes through. And it's very risky, again, for a new episode. Like, you watch this and you look through those first few things, you're like, my God, how did TNG make it? But they made it. And <laughs> it's really thanks to to you guys, to, to you, Denise and LeVar, and some of these performances. And then even, like, we get McDougal, who doesn't come back again, and Riker... And yeah, they are affected. They're not affected much until maybe the end. I don't even know if McDougal is affected. And it just kind of makes me wonder, like Scotty in the original, uh, small spoiler, but if you haven't seen it by now, my God. Um, to, can they just handle their liquor better? Does that is that what it is? Or is 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 Bill Riker just secretly um slosh the whole time and we just don't know it? <laughs> it just finally hits him at the end. And is That's that why possible. we never see Mc there? You know what? No, never mind. I'm done. Nope, no spoilers there. Um, but yes, great episode um, when you look at it as a whole. Mm -hmm. Carry on. <laughs> great stuff there. Um, let's see. Speaking of great stuff, Katie Carr is wearing an awesome Star Trek uniform. She's here. She's a red shirt. How you doing? What do you think of this? I'm doing good. Uh, it's been, I'm going to be honest, it's been so long since I've seen this episode. It has been really long, but I remember it like yesterday. So, um, yeah, I thought it kind of like what Tyranny said, it, it, these first few episodes of TNG, I mean, there's good and there's moments, but um <laughs> I, I, I think it was a good, I do kind of agree that it was kind of a copy from the naked, the naked time of uh, TOS, but I think kind of placing that situation on the TNG crew was good. I don't, I, I would have seen it. I, this episode worked for the cast of TNG, whereas I don't think it would work for Voyager. I don't think it would work for Enterprise. Um, but yeah, I mean, this episode, it, it was good in its own sense. I think that it, for those who've seen DS9 Fascination, it kind of reminds me more of that one. Hmm. Do you know which one I'm talking about? Yeah, it's it's similar in that they kind of, yeah. I think Jake was going Jimmy. after mm -hmm. Kira or yeah. something like that, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so, but yeah, and Tasha and Data would have been cute as a couple. Yeah. They would have been. <laughs> and I, you know, It's only he, episode two, you never know. <laughs> Um, but yeah, no, and there's, I don't know if any of you have seen the movie, The Ten Commandments, but in the movie, there's this scene with Nefertari, who's like the Egyptian princess, and she takes all these silk scarves and she puts them all around her. And it reminded me when Tasha does that with yeah. the, with the, with the fabrics, I was like, oh, she's channeling Nefertari. So, <laughs> um, but no, and Denise, you look beautiful in this episode. Oh. You really did. The, the, the sleek hair suits you so well. I wish oh. they would have had your hair like that more. It was really pretty. Thank so, you. but yeah, my only wish was, yeah, the, the data and Tasha. Although when I do watch a show though, I don't need everybody paired together, but even if they would have had more like a brother and sister relationship following what happened. Um, I just, I thought that Brent and Denise really had good chemistry on screen. Mm -hmm. Wow. Love it. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Matt Boardman is here, hanging out with us, showing off some VFX skills. Uh, how are you today? What do you think of this episode? Hang on, you're still muted. All right, there we He's go. It's VFX, <laughs> not audio effects. I know, right? <laughs> People's kids. Um, no, I, it was fun to go back and watch it again. Um, it, I don't know. It always is. Uh, I. I, I don't know if everybody else remembers or if they participated in this, but when uh, Columbia House offered uh, Next Gen on VHS, um, and it was like you got you got two episodes per VHS, and they were insanely expensive. They came every six to eight weeks. But anyway, when I would get sick, um, that was like my that was like my warm blanket that I would pull my parents' TV VCR combo down into my room, and I remember having encounter far point and then this one and then and it had the next episode on it you know and i would just kind of sit there and watch it over and over again so it was uh fun to come back to this one it's uh yeah it's it's a fun it's a fun little romp i uh 
I always laugh because I used to I used to call uh, in this episode. It wasn't Tasha Yar; it was Sasha Yar because she had a very sassy walk in there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> um, and also the the part where where Data is talking about you know where where Picard's like Data, you're not human. You can't possibly be drunk. Did anybody else notice Michael Dorn trying to keep a straight face through that whole thing? Like he kept like contorting his jaw this way and that. Like he was trying to be serious, but it was like, he was totally. I I don't know. To me, it seemed like he was almost about to break character, and I I wish that he had. Um, Damn, I missed that. But uh, yeah, it was just fun, you know. The Picard and, and Crusher stuff was absolute gold. Um, I just uh, and I and I get like others have messaged. I I love that we get to see Wesley be smart because it's just like i mean i love that moment where he's like where you know the engineer is like well it you, that would take you know this long to map out everything he's like no it's totally simple if you just see it in your head you know so i i, I love those moments um i also thought it was cool that uh this was i don't as a visual effects standpoint this is rob legato's first uh hmm. I, think, I don't think first episode where he was the visual effects supervisor and if you don't know uh rob legato he went on and did uh visual effects supervisor for episodes of deep space nine but also titanic uh the first wow. Harry Potter movie uh he he had some part in the avatar movie and he's got to step his game up now <laughs> i know <laughs> i know <laughs> I'm like, oh, I with my life <laughs> we'll help him out we'll help him out yeah exactly so uh but no just uh it's just fun and i and i love mm-hmm. you know rod jones did the score of this and and uh, you know again that those opening credits uh or the the teaser they're opening with that very hopeful music um and uh and, and patrick stewart's and i don't know why but for some reason his voice sounded so deep when he you know captain's log you know it was very uh very fun but yeah love this episode i noticed picard's voice too it sounded sultry Perfect mood setter. Uh, speaking of which, Eve England out in Wales is here. She's the one that invented the. <laughs> uh, <laughs> how are you today, Eve? What'd you think of this episode? Um, yeah, it's definitely a change in tone from last week. Um, and I just kept thinking it's just well that like, Q didn't show up this time, as if well, they'd have been in some trouble. Um, but yeah, I mean. It, it was there were some really funny moments in it. I did like how, as loads of people have already said, about how it did sort of focus on different characters and did move on personalities and character sort of arcs, even in you know this early on, um, especially for Wesley, um, Tasha, and Dr. Crusher. I, I really liked Dr. Crusher's um, initial portrayal when she found out that she had had the disease and she was had that sort of flustered kind of. Mm-hmm. You know, but she was clearly trying to concentrate and she really couldn't. And I thought that that was good. Um, I mean, I, I do agree with Denise, though. I, I did feel a bit uncomfortable with the way that the portrayals of the intoxication affected the sexes differently. And that was that was kind of a shame because I think I initially thought that Beverly was going to react to it slightly differently than. But then it kind of developed into having the hot to Picard. Um, but, but overall, yeah, it was good. I, I did like the um, as um Stephanie mentioned, you know, the shag fest in the Arctic room was really, <laughs> I felt like, I mean, it was actually, I mean, taking aside the fact that it was an orgy, it, I thought that was a really, visually, that was a really interesting. And I wondered whether they had leftover props from last week, because they'd used that sort of same freezing effect last week. Mm-hmm. So I wonder whether they just had loads of whatever they used for that left. And they thought, oh, well, this, we could just, you know, have everyone frozen in, the, in an orgy room. So I, I, I don't know if that was, I might, I might try and Google that, because that was quite interesting. Um, but yeah, I, I thought it was good. It was it was good fun. I wasn't expecting that episode after last week's episode, um, so it was a bit of a shock. But yeah, I, there were so so many fun bits, and everyone's really covered the points I was going to cover. Mm. Get ready to keep being shocked as we move <laughs> forward through the next generation. Denise, do you have any final thoughts before we run off? Oh my gosh! Um, again, you know it it is quite uh a thrilling ride to 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 go through these episodes um again and after all this time and then you know to hang out with you guys and 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 hear your your thoughts and take and um it's uh it's just really crazy 
I'm I'm just as thinking though of the scene in which Tasha is uh, uh, Troy walks in and Tasha's in her room going through her stuff, yeah. you know, and I'm thinking what an what an interesting you know she doesn't she doesn't have a problem with that you know like she doesn't reprimand her, but she has loads of these like beautiful silks that we've ne- we never see Troy in. Yeah. And for the rest Good of the, the show, it's like, what, what are you doing with it? What is she doing with all this stuff? <laughs> She's a hoarder. From what you're She's a right hoarder. <laughs> a hoarder. So see, there's a character reveal. We didn't know that Troy was a hoarder. <laughs> and, then, and, and that's the thing, because you actually mentioned, like, like I see you wear this kind of stuff that's all the right. time. And I... That's, but that's right. We, you always look so lovely. You always, yeah. you know, you do. I mean, you, I'm sure you do, but I mean, you know, you, you never not wear those these, colorful, not, those not colorful in those silks. silks. No, no, no. Mm-hmm. it was uh, not on the bridge. Yeah. Did they, uh, uh, Denise, did they close the set down a little bit just for your privacy when you were in that outfit or was it just business as usual? Because sometimes was, when, when yeah. you're doing a scene, yeah. They'll, no, they'll I kinda... mean, it, it wasn't really that. I mean, it was, it, it, you know, obviously like love scenes, they get, you know, well, now it's so it's so completely different because you have, you know, advisors on set, you know, that that actually help you out with that. Um, but Doggy style, doggy style. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God! Yeah, right. Don't worry, exactly. we stopped recording a minute ago. Don't oh my know. God! <laughs> I can't. I mean, Serotic was going to show his face. Um, Serotic. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, I just remember that it was. It, it wasn't. It, it 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 was not the easiest thing to do. You know that where wear that and come to set, you know, nobody had seen it and have to take off, you know, a bathrobe and suddenly be standing there with a crew of all men. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it, 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 it can, it, it can be awkward, you know, Mm. it's it's a little awkward, but sorry, there you go. I lost you for a minute. Sorry about that. No, no, no. But you know, it, it it again. I mean, so much has changed. Thank God for for women for filming. Uh, back back then, you know, eighty seven. It was um, you know, you were you were on your own out there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, right. You know, on that on it's it's all it's all good. All good. Got through it. It, I mean, if you can on, look that good in an it, outfit, it was then... taped and glued, and it didn't move. Yeah, they pulled. Tell us how to tape. Uh, yeah, yeah. No, you can. That tell. outfit looked great on you. Uh, Sirak, any final thoughts on your? Well, besides like that, Denise looked yeah, amazing. I, yeah, I, I, yeah. <laughs> you guys got to see like... the the first two segments. Sirak was like Denise. <laughs> Denise, yeah. <laughs> As a matter of fact, if you really look closely. <laughs> <laughs> God. Look closely, and I turned my notes this way. Wow. I wrote down the intended vibes. Yeah. Oh, okay. Because <laughs> I was getting some intended vibes, and uh, that's a Deep Space that. Nine character, Denise. Yeah. Uh, All right. Okay. Okay. It's, it's yeah. It's when Nana is turning into sexy Nana. So. Uh, <laughs> Got it. <sexy>. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. anyway well i guess we yeah. better go everybody um <laughs> naughty nurse we're all yeah. gonna <laughs> uh we will uh see you next time thank you very much to melissa stephanie mike sue carrie muhammad chris and marie tj my tierney matt and katie not eve just kidding and eve <laughs> Thank you all very much. We will see you very soon for episode number three for Sirach, myself, Denise, and Mr. Aaron Eisenberg. Thank you all for joining us. And always remember the seventh rule. <laughs>